Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo992 and today we are back from our brand new video. It's going to be another Ranger roundup and another recap of the latest Rangers news. I know I'm a day late with the first story, but I have to slap off a delicious and clickbaity tile anyway. Yesterday was obviously cinema day when, when I never upload on a Wednesday and also it was Valentine's Day, so you know. So without any further ado, let's jump onto the very first story of today and it's a very, very happy one. It's going to be the Blue Cafu. A.K.A. Tav, A.K.A. the best fullback in the SPFL, <laughs> has signed a new deal. Now, I did actually tweet this out, I think, two days before it sort of happened, because I sort of been told on the wind that it was going to be happening. A 3.5-year deal. I was absolutely delighted to see it officially announced, because even when you get told these sort of people that you kind of rely on, you're never actually sure until it actually happens. And thankfully, when I seen that tweet from Rangers FC... I just, it just filled me with joy. Like, going back with Tav last season, it's just so weird to think of him where he is. Because if you go back to last year, I actually put Tav... <laughs> go on. Tell them what you've done. Go on. <laughs> no, I never. Actually, I never. I never put Tav as the worst right back in Rangers history. <laughs> I never. Liar! I did. I did, actually. And that's embarrassing now. Because he was last year. It's hard to think because of his good performances this year. But those first couple of months, especially in the last season, he was absolutely a liability each and every single game. And throughout the whole season last year, I think he was poor. It's just the transformation he's made from last season to this is absolutely unbelievable. And you've got to give Pedro credit. And you've got to give Murray credit. But more importantly, you have to give uh, Tavernier the credit himself. He talked about it. If you go watch his interview on YouTube on the Ranger Football thing, I won't spoil everything. But he basically says he's got unfinished business. He's here to win some titles. And he's here to bring 55. Knowing exactly those words, but he kind of said it. And I read through the lines. So what's your thoughts, actually, on Tavernier sending that three and a half yard? Ah, yard. Why are you so shit great? So what's your actual thoughts about Tav signing that 3.5 year deal to 2021? He's obviously expecting us to win uh, 55 before then. I like it, because that stops 10 in a row, so I'll take that all day. I love that positive mindset. I don't know why I've done this. This is the new move. Just like Paul's. So I'll give you a few seconds just to fire your opinions in below. I couldn't give it a bigger thumbs up. We need our best players to be signing long-term deals or even longer deals than what they're currently on so we don't do another Barry fucking Mackay situation, okay? He's gone, Craig. Get over it. Doesn't matter who the manager is. Um, right, let's move on to the second story today. And I've got to warn you, it is a bit sad. Um, so obviously, Jordan Ross, but we're all excited. On January the 4th or 5th, I can't really remember, he fired up this picture. He started playing with the youth against some man of the match performances against Valencia, or was it Villarreal? I can't remember. Um, he had been in some great sub games, but unfortunately, he's actually been injured in the Manchester United uh, development game. Um, now, there's no official quote on what it is or how long he's actually going to be out, but it's believed he's going to be assessed on Monday for an ankle injury. It's not the previous thing that's held him back, like his back and his knee and blah, 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 all that stuff we've actually heard about. This is something different, hopefully... Fingers crossed, lads. I know I say this every time he gets injured and update it. Hopefully it's nothing serious. Hopefully it's just a wee silly knock and they're being over precautious. I'd love that to be the case. But it's not looking good, lads. It looks like another another fucking spell on the sideline. So what is your thoughts on John Ross? And I've seen all the tweets. Some of them... The reason I didn't put on an official poll, I kind of just hid it underneath one of the pictures, was... There's, there's a lot of jokes going about about Ross and everything. And now I'm just thinking, because last month we've seen that quote where I was talking about his mentality... He's, he's, he's physic his mental state isn't as great just now because he's constantly injured. I didn't really want to rip the piss. I didn't want to come up here and do jokes or read out some people's tweets ripping the piss out of him. My thought says, I understand the waste of wages. I understand that completely. But he has got tremendous potential. Um, I genuinely believe he's still need to stick out. He's still got a contract. He's not on too much high money. You know what I mean? It's not I know in the grand scheme of things that might not look good just to waste wages. But we kind of just quitting the boy because he's injured. I know I never like to speak about him on the channel. But look at Judas. He came back and he was one of our best players for a, a number of years before eventually. I'm just going to edit this bit out because I went on a wee bit of a tangent about that Judas bitch. And it doesn't really represent this video. So yeah, here's the edit version. Was a Judas bitch and left. Um, and that's kind of like a positive thing. I was trying to go back and I even fired up on Twitter who some of the players that got a serious injury or was out for a length of time and came back. Ian Durant obviously was never exactly the same player, but he came back and done a lot for us. And you know, you've got to look at Michael Moles, was never the same. Didn't have that turn of pace, but he was still a very, very good player for us. I'm not saying Rosser's not going to be the player he was. I'm just going to be saying um, there is players in the past who's had a lot of injuries who's came back and done a turn for us. I hope the wee man does it. I understand that, that side of things where people saying it's a waste of wages, it's time to go. I just, I don't know, I've maybe been too um, sympathetic and too sentimental. 
I just I just want him to play for Rangers again. What is your thoughts on that? Do you think he's going to play for Rangers again? And what would you do if you were the manager? Would you sell him in the summer or would you keep him and try and bring him back? Because he has got tremendous potential. This kid's an under-21 um, captain for England. So he has got all the potential in the world, but there was a reason that Liverpool let him leave for free and that's because of his injury record. On the second story of today and now before we jump over to the question again we've started bringing this in where you guys can actually ask me a question and I'll answer, well ask you guys it on the video. It's a good way to get your opinions out there and get some conversations but you know what time it is ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls children of all ages sponsor break time, grab your refreshments 3, 2, 1, sponsor break <laughs> Shut up Andy, we're not talking about you, no one cares, not one person. I'm actually going to kind of cheat already on only my second episode because Ibrox Law also sent me a question in and also so did the winner of today's question. So I'm just going to answer this one personally because I feel like this one's kind of more aimed at me from Ibrox Law. And when all that BS was happening when I was quoted out of context, they were the only one that kind of stood up behind me and sort of like backed me. So I always try to give them support whenever I can, so let's read out what they've got to say. In your opinion, does John Rosser have a future at Rangers or is it a case now that is another pro then a slash tempo in? Great call. Uh, too injury prone and we'll never get to see his true talent. Or do we wait it out just in case he sorts himself out, however long that would be? Mimi, if it was up to me, and again, you've already written your answers, you've already answered it, so I'm not going influence, to uh, influence your decision. Hopefully you've already commented that is, and also smash the like button while you're there. Eh? Um, me, personally, I'd wait it out. Because look at Tempo. In. Didn't he score against us? I know he's not got to the height, but he's back. He's playing games for Hamilton. And I genuinely think Rosser's potential is so high, it's worth it. If we've got the money, if we can afford to keep keeping him, um, he's just, he, I think his potential is too high. So if it's up to me, I'd keep him. Um, again, hopefully that doesn't sway your decision either way and you're five years in. But thanks for shouting that in, Ibrox Loyal. So always appreciate to see you on the tweets. Now, let's read out the official one. And to be fair, it was the very first question, so I've not copped out. It's just the one that kind of grabbed my attention. It's a great thing for you guys, the Novo Nation, to answer. And it's actually going to come from Scott Young. He's a long, 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 long time channel legend. I kind of feel like Scott was here before I was. And he basically says, Wallace or John? That is going to be the question of the episode. Make sure to be firing it down below. I'm not going to tell you what I would think because it doesn't matter what I think. It only matters what your opinion is on that one. Wallace or John, who and why? Fire it down below. I've obviously been CJ Nova 92. That has been Andy. Thank you for watching and bye bye.